I don't hate you. I can't hate you. It's not our way. Showing Rahma, mercy, that is our way. Two years after Suleiman's death, you came face to face with the boy who took his life. For 25 years, Daniel Villegas fought to prove his innocence in the 1993 capital murder case of Armando Lazo and Bobby England. The road to this moment had been a long and arduous one filled with twists and turns. Villegas had been only 16 when the murders occurred, and his first trial ended in a mistrial. He was convicted in a second trial and spent 18 years in prison before his conviction was overturned. The third trial, which took place for a week, involved dozens of appeals and decisions, making it one of the most high-profile cases in El Paso's history. This is where things get emotional. On October 5th, 2018, his third trial reached a conclusion, and he was found not guilty. Number 940D09328, verdict form B. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daniel Villegas, not guilty of... <laughs> You can see Villegas collapse to his knees, weeping with relief and joy, while his family and supporters erupted in applause. Villegas' reaction showed the weight of the past 25 years as he stepped outside the courtroom. He thanked the people of El Paso for their support, saying that their unwavering belief in his innocence had given him strength when he needed it most. And as he watched a video of the verdict with his family, he finally let out a cry of relief. The stress of the trial and the years of uncertainty finally released from his body. The verdict brought a sense of closure, but could not erase the pain of the past or undo the harm inflicted on so many people. For Daniel Villegas, the not guilty verdict was a chance to start a new chapter in his life, to move forward with his family and put the past behind him. But the memories of the past would always linger. That record, we try to get a job anywhere we want to get a job at, and what happens? That stupid record comes out. You can go to jury trial and get not convicted and still be f***ed. A reminder of the injustices he had suffered and the strength he had found to overcome them. Villegas had been fighting for his innocence for so long that he almost forgot what being a free man was like. But now, the weight of the world had been lifted off his shoulders, and he could finally start his life anew. And every time I get an interview, they hire me, and then the background check comes back, and then it's like you've been convicted. His lawyer, Joe Spencer, struggled to put his emotions into words. Thanking Daniel and his family for their strength and perseverance through a quarter century of hardship. But the prosecutors have no physical, forensic, or DNA evidence that Villegas committed the murders. They only relied on the coerced confession of a frightened 16-year-old Villegas. But while the verdict exonerated Villegas, it did not heal the wounds of his family or the victim's families. The prosecutor, James Montoya, expressed disappointment in the verdict, stating that the evidence had shown Villegas to be responsible for the deaths of Lazo in England. Yet, Villegas maintained his innocence, refusing to accept a plea deal and putting his faith in the jury. This is Nevea Jackson. Nevea is in court to testify against the people that ended her mother's life. Have you not said you're sorry for taking my mommy away from me? My mommy was the love of my life. I remember that night and it scares you. You are supposed to love people, not hurt and kill them. Imagine being just three years old and witnessing something so horrific that it will change your life forever. That was the case for Nevea Jackson, who saw her mother, Kashmir James, murdered in cold blood on Christmas Day in 2010 in Los Angeles. Kashmir, a 25-year-old nurse, was shot nine times by gang members who mistook her for someone else. Nevaeh was sitting in the back seat of the car when her mother was shot. It's hard to fathom the trauma she must have experienced at such a young age. Fast forward five years later, and Nevaeh is now an eight-year-old girl 
who will give evidence and testify during the trial of the alleged killers. This is when things got emotional. I'll make you a present for Thanksgiving, I'll say. I'll make you a present for your birthday, I'll make you a present for Halloween, I'll make you a present. It takes immense courage to face the people who took away someone so important in your life. But for Nevea, this is not just about justice for her mother, it's also about ensuring that no other family has to suffer the same fate. The alleged killers, Darnell Deshaun Houston and Lamar McKnight, were arrested with a juvenile who was later dealt with as part of a plea agreement. During their trial, an emotional Nevea asked the gang members tear-jerking questions. Here is Nevea testifying during the trial. Have you not said you're sorry for taking my mommy away from me? My mommy was the love of my life. I remember that night and it scares me. You are supposed to love people, not hurt and kill them. For her grandmother, Kim Evans, who lost her daughter, the trial is just another hurdle in her ongoing battle with grief. It's hard to imagine what Nevea and her family have gone through and are still going through. But her resilience in the face of tragedy is a testament to the human spirit. Nevea may have seen the worst of humanity at a young age, but she's determined to be a part of the solution. And to do that, she has turned her focus toward the foundation launched in honor of her much-loved mother. The foundation aims at countering gang culture and gun violence in South Los Angeles. Nevea's determination to make a difference is inspiring, as is the kind-heartedness of Rukia Abdul Mutakalim. Two years after Suleiman's death, you came face to face with the boy who took his life. This is Rukia Abdul Mutakalim, and the boy she is hugging is Javon Coulter. The night of June 28, 2015, in South Cumminsville, Ohio, changed Rukia Abdul Mutakalim's life forever. Her son, 39 year old Navy veteran Suleiman Ahmed Abdul Mutakalim, was shot in the back of the head as he walked home carrying a bag of food from a nearby White Castle. Police investigation revealed that he was an innocent victim caught in the crossfire of a robbery gone wrong. His wallet contained less than $60. Two teenagers, Javon Coulter and Valentino Patisse, were charged and found guilty of involuntary manslaughter with gun specification and aggravated robbery with gun specification. Javon was just 14 when he committed the crime. Rukia had to endure the agony of losing her son and then watching as his killers were sentenced to prison. What happened in this courtroom was one of the most touching moments ever in a courtroom. I don't hate you. I can't hate you. It's not our way. Showing Rahma mercy, that is our way. Rukia didn't seek revenge. Instead, she did something that stunned everyone in the courtroom. She hugged Javon and offered to be a part of his life. As Rukia spoke to Javon, she offered him forgiveness and asked to be a part of his life. My family would like very much to be a part of your seeing a better way of life so that this does not repeat itself. It was an unexpected turn of events for everyone in the courtroom. It left many wondering how Rukia could offer compassion to the young man who had taken her son's life. But Rukia sees things differently. She believes that Coulter and his accomplice, Valentino Patisse, who also took a plea deal, were infected with a disease but could be cured. She wants to visit them in prison regularly and help them become better people. For Rukia, vengeance is not the answer. It won't bring back her son, and it won't solve anything. Instead, she wants to fight for the young men who took her son's life to show them that there is a better life out there and to help them find their way to it. And you were a baby, and you are still a child. She sees her son's killers as children who have mothers, just like herself. Two years after Suleiman's death, you came face to face with the boy who took his life. 66-year-old Rukia didn't just hug only Javon, she also hugged Javon's mother, and the two women cried at each other's shoulders. Javon Coulter, who was just a child when he committed the crime, was visibly moved by Rukia's words and actions. He expressed his remorse for what he had done 
and apologized to Rukie and her family. While you're cleaning your tears, let me take you to Palm Beach County Courthouse, Florida, where Brandon Dinetz gives an open statement in a DUI case. Brandon and his girlfriend, Jen Lettman, have been together for months. Since Lettman is also a lawyer, Brandon requested that she be in court to watch his opening statement and support him. But Jen Lettman was about to get the surprise of her life. The case began and the jury was called in, but Lettman noticed that something just wasn't right. She is a lawyer too, and she knows that the jury is made up of 12 people, but the number of jurors that took the seat was way more than 12. Moreover, she knew every one of them. She could see her father, sister, aunt, and a few of her relatives at the back. Then it dawned on her. This isn't a real trial. It's fake. 28-year-old hopeless romantic Brandon Dinetz had spent five months planning an elaborate fake trial just to propose to her. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, typically I start uh, my openings by talking about the privilege I have of representing the state of Florida. The DUI case, the defense attorney, the defendant, the judge, and all 17 of Jen's family and friends were part of the whole setup. He even managed to get the Palm Beach County Courthouse in on the act. Now, Ledman has realized what is happening and immediately crumbles to tears. <laughs> but Brandon wasn't done. He still gave his opening statement and presented Exhibit A, a diamond ring. Brandon had designed a special ring for the occasion, embedded with a diamond from Jen's grandmother's engagement ring. With the ring, Brandon formally asked Jen to marry him. Will you marry him? <laughs> <laughs> and as the judge jokingly sentenced Brandon to life with Jen, the happy couple couldn't help but laugh and celebrate with their loved ones. But love can truly move mountains, or in this case, fake trials. To see more cases like Daniel's, where people almost get life in prison for crimes they didn't commit, click here.